Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, having me here. And uh, uh, I think uh, I hope all of you are doing well, uh, especially in these pandemic situations. Uh, there's been a lot of challenges uh, uh, in the last uh, six months. And nevertheless, I think India had uh, resilience uh, and we have bounced back. The industry has bounced back. I think as Kiran Anand said, that the data points, what uh, it is showing that, you know, like uh, India never uh, shut down in the energy efficiency journey, which has started 20 years before by CII. And, uh, and we have been uh, happily involved with the CIA for uh, the last 20 years now. So what we want to talk today is about this couple of uh, the technologies, uh, what's happening with respect to the, the drives. Uh, let me know if you are able to see this second uh, screen, Anna, so that at least uh, I know the speed at which I'm uh, looking at. Uh, so, so I think today we will talk about uh, three things about uh, in the drives, because I'm since I'm coming from drives, I would like to uh, uh, talk about uh, drives and what happens in the drives technology and what's happening around the drives uh, technology. I think that's what I would like to uh, share here. I think today the drive VFD, you, all of you are aware that uh, VFD is uh, uh, the one which is the backbone of energy efficiency. But what is more relevant today is that the VFD, you know, drive is a drive is a drive which is run, runs the motor. What else? But it is no more that now. I think it is more now. It's more than the drive. It has become an intelligent drive. It's basically drive is becoming like a sensor. So let's talk about that a little in a while. And then I'll also talk about the energy efficiency norms if, or energy compliance norms about the VFDs, uh, because we know about the motors, but we also talk about the VFDs, why this is relevant for us when you're talking about energy efficiency. Then we'll also talk about green restart. I think that's uh, more uh, important here with respect to green restart, uh, uh, where I will talk about a uh, little uh, touch about the electrification here. So as I speak here, I think I would like to also talk about uh, uh, the drives, which is an intelligent drive when you're talking about. I think the feature direction is a drive. I think all of you know the drive is a drive, right? But what is the difference? I think a lot of things have changed in the, over the period of time with respect to drive technology. I think when you're talking about the drive technology, I think there's one thing which has happened with respect to hardware, but the second thing which is happening with respect to software. I think the drive is no more a drive. Now we should uh, technically we should call it as the intelligent drive. I think that's what I would say. We should call it as the intelligent drive. When you say intelligent drive, what do you mean by intelligent drive? The intelligent drive means I think uh, uh, the hardware part. I can. Say, you know, we have seen a drive of uh, huge enclosure panels, and now that uh, has been reducing it to 33 percent. Now with the new technology uh, which is coming in, uh, probably we are able to reduce even the size by another 25% with respect to the width of the drive, uh, with the same power density. But that's the technology is coming in with respect to drives. Uh, then it's coming to the volume. I think you're able to reduce that volume by 30%. So that means you're able to contain the entire power, the power density in a small footprint. That means because today you are able to run the entire power plant with a small uh, control room, rather than having a huge air conditioned control room, which we are typically used to, so which is also bring down the total cost. The second thing which I want to talk about the software. I think that the, that the drive, you know, we know, we know, you program the drive, the drive will run, and then drive will uh, give that output, uh, and uh, that's it. That's what we think. But actually, it is uh, now today we are talking about the drive also monitors the input supply. The drive also monitors internally what's happening with the hardware. The drive also monitors the cable. The drive also monitors the motor. So that that means. The entire thing is going to be a kind of a, a integrated thing. Uh, that is how we call this the drive as an intelligent drive. So what does it mean with respect to when you say intelligent drive? When you say intelligent drive, uh, when you say here, it drives acts as a sensor and detects applications and pick up the right information. Like, you know, this is a typical graph which I've shown you here, uh, where you can see here uh, the typical uh, um, <coughs> the healthy conditions or early burnout conditions of hardware, and there are some issues with respect to hardware or some functionals, and there's a failure. The drive is able to sense that there is going to be a problem. And then it can give an information to you. This is one stage of information. The second, uh, the information is about, the drive also tells you that this is the kind of problems you are likely to face, and this is the time you should take it for maintenance. And this is the kind of process. Let me talk from the input. I talked about input supply. I talked about the hardware. I talked about the cable. Then I talked about the motor. Let us go on by one. Input supply. Say for example, there are some places where the power supplies, you see a sag, surge, transients, and there is sometimes one 
missing uh, for a particular cycle, which is we have seen, we have done a, a lot of deep study in India about the power quality. And what we have seen is there is a lot of power quality issues. The dry will observe this particular time, this is the particular phase, the power is dripping, or this is the voltage which is dripping. It will be export to you the data points to you. There you can find out, okay, there is something with respect to the power quality issue, what we need to be addressed. So that is what the drive can tell you. Coming to the hardware, the drive can talk about, okay, what is my life of the capacitor? What is my life of my fan? What is life of my hardware? How does it function? And does it deliver the full? Then is my load, for example, if you have got a load now, or let's say it can be a kill, or it can be a, a, a idea of the fan, and it can be a crane, uh, just to take an example, the typical load parameters will not change. It will be more or less the same. So it will, ideal condition, it will observe the pattern over a period of time and then say, hey, there's something wrong with the load profiling, the way it functions. Uh. Mr. Palnasamy, I think we lost your audio uh, now. Uh, Mr. Palnasamy, we lost your audio, sir. Okay, uh, give me a minute. Uh... Can you hear me, uh, Kiran? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you well. Okay, now it's so good. what I'll do is I'll mute my uh, video. Uh, I mean, uh, that's better to get the bandwidth now. So I think I, I, I think I was talking about uh, where did you lose? Uh, Arnon, sorry, sorry for this. Uh, we uh, lost the last uh, twenty seconds of uh, your uh, right. set. Okay, so then it, when it comes to load profiling, I said about it. Tell about the load. How does the load performs? And if there's a problem with the load, then hey, there's something wrong with the typical process of the load and then this process of the load, so that you can go back and check the mechanical systems, or you can go back and check uh, is there something with the parameters or something with other uh, within the hardware itself. Then we're talking about the cable. I think the cable, the drive cable length uh, varies from few meters to even up to kilometers. And there are some it goes up to even four or five kilometers of the length. There could be potential uh, cable issues, and probably that will also the drive will. I will be able to identify here and say there's something on the missing cable or something insulation issue. Then it will also talk about is there something with the missing phase with the motor? And probably it can say, okay, there's something wrong with the uh, uh, motor phase and there's something which is missing with the respect to the motor here. I think this is so what does it mean? It means that you are not having any external sensor on hardware, probably you're able to get all the data points in from the drive itself and you're able to uh, completely analyze the data point. Now, this data, what you get, is not kept within the drive. It also could be connected to the cloud. And I can tell you today, this is the world's first cyber security drives available, and this is the technology is going to come in the future. So this is the uh, uh, cyber secured uh, data points, which is connected to the cloud, where you have the complete, uh, the extensive data mining is done here. The intelligent drive that's a extensive data mining and it tells exactly what is that you need to understand about the application you need to understand the process is there something uh, wrong with the system and it will tell you what we need to do is there something which is uh, need to be corrected here i think in short basically it's a digital basically it's going to be a digital drive basically to combine the security and intelligence that's what i would call it as an essay intelligent drive here and the drive designs are optimized, they can perform to meet your applications. And basically, when having said about all this, uh, the data points or intelligence, this also has to be very user friendly. So that means if, you, if anyone can use a smartphone, even today a kid at the age of uh, three is able to operate a, key, uh, a smartphone, I think the drive or such a simple user friendly are being designed so that it's much more user friendly and easy to set up and integrate into the system. And also, this is going to be uh, it's going to be a drive where it can talk to any kind of communication. So it's a profi net or a device net, I think you should be able to talk to any communication or any kind of motor, whether it's an induction motor or a synchronous electronics motor or a permanent magnet motor or a servo kind of motor. I think the drive should be able to talk the same without need of changing. I think that's what we're talking about here. I think 
as i said as a summary drive as a sensor when i say drive as a sensor we are talking about uh, <coughs> analyzing the internal system analyzing the power quality connecting to the cloud clouds and also collecting the data points what does it mean basically right from the grid the drive to the motor and application process i think drive connects everything takes a lot of data points takes a lot of information and co creates a data and extensive data mining is done such a way that you are able to take informed decisions what do you mean by informed decisions probably you can take it for a troubleshooting you can take it for a cutting services you can take about maintenance you can also optimize the process as i said is there something wrong with the process probably you can also data points you can analyze and then take informed decisions about the maintenance and also where we want to i think here this is a small a piece of information because of paucity of time i cannot walk you through the entire thing but i think be the hardware i think today uh, as as i said to you the ambient temperatures are increasing of course after the lockdown probably we have gone turn green but the ambient temperature increasing that means ambient temperature should be 50 degree or 55 degree i think dry should be able to run whether it's a dusty environment crushy environment moisture environment chemical environment dry should have been designed like that because in india the dust is unavoidable so that means you must have an electronic system which can work in the dusty environment when it comes to integration i think all the options should be integrated without compromising safety and performance i think that's what we call it as intelligent drive so that means a lot of things are happening uh, with respect to the drives here when it comes to the technology i think a lot of things is happening with the technology so this is about a drive technology you will be hearing very shortly in the coming days what else more here and of course i will be happy to share you offline as well uh, but then this is what is going to happen is the drive as a sensor there is no more hardware drive box anymore then the next topic which i want to talk about is eco design so this is a directives about the compliance of bfds and here uh, this is basically talking about we, we know about iec 60034 uh, uh, 30.1 for motors for dol 30-2 for the motor with the motor with the bfds and then for the drive and motor system it is called en 5059h and then basically that is complies to iec 6180-9 for drives and motor system what does it mean to us it means you could see here a drive today vfd is we think okay vfd is a vfd okay all the vfd is the same all the vfd is a running motor yes all the vfd runs the motor what what are the losses the losses are the very big thing here i think vfd one is vfd loss the next is a motor loss and then put together is called something called the total loss is called es so what is the system complies to and today if your drive is ie2 and your motors are with a better uh, loss uh, efficiency then you are able to get a es2 and how does how do you know that how do you identify whether my drive and my motor load is complying to this system there are tools available now it's called energy efficiency certificate tool it's called eco smart tool available now it can be downloaded from google play or app store where you can see the drive efficiency you can see a motor efficiency you can see the total combined efficiency of it. i think this is that what we are talking about i think today the drive you should not look at it just a vfd and what is the cost we should look at the what is the vfd what is the losses what is the motor what is the losses what is the total losses so because i can give an example we have done a study on a cement plant the losses between uh, uh, the uh, because of the technology of tool for different products it can save almost 5 lakh rupees per year i can tell you 5 lakh rupees it's a huge money right and a 20 uh, years of life cycle of a cement plant uh, of the investment you can imagine the kind of money what we save i think that is where this ies plays a very very important role i think this is what is emerging and evolving going forward i think as kiran anand said that there's a lot of things that happened improvement has happened in india i think this is what india should uh, drive going forward ab about this ies compliance here so when i talking about ies compliance we are talking about drive we are also talking about the driven equipments as a total system efficiency so this also can tell you what is the full load efficiency we can talk about the part load efficiency at full bandwidth so that means you are able to optimize and identify from the by using a tool itself that means you are upfront able to make informed decisions 
about your total system. I think that is what we should focus on because as you talk about uh, investing uh, millions of rupees for uh, buying a VFD system, what is important is you must look for efficiency standards here. That's very, very relevant and important. Then I will talk about the most important talk about the green restock. So when you talk about green restock, what does it mean? I think here, we, uh, I think uh, way back uh, uh, years ago, I think uh, we were talking about uh, neutrality, carbon footprint. Uh, I think um, uh, we are talking about energy surplus. Uh, you could see here, I think in this pandemic situation, I think everything has come to standstill, right? Almost all of us were under, kept and went under lockdown. Everything has come back. But what is very, very important is the past is history. But I think drive technology. Now I'm talking about drive technology, not only drives. The drive technology has got an important role to bring back the economy and also keeping the emission curve flat. That means what we have to look is look forward, what we are going to do and what we are doing right. And this is what we should talk about, about this. <clears throat> I talked about this uh, uh, <coughs> green restart here. I think in the way back, we have signed an agreement with uh, in Paris for 1.5 degree. I think uh, this data is most of you are aware which CIA has been educating all of us. The, only 3% of the world we are occupying, but we consume 80% of energy and we contribute 75% CO2 footprint. I think 33% is coming from buildings, 25% contributed by transport and 20% by industry. I think that's a contribution made by us in polluting the environment. Maybe over the last three months, uh, uh, four months when we were locked down, probably India, uh, the world got greener, uh, the sky got uh, blue and uh, clear, but then we are back to normal. I think that we are going to have an impact. So I think whatever we talked about energy efficiency, that improvements, it can account 44% of reduction in CO2 emission. That can come from 44% from energy uh, efficiency improvement, 36% from renewable energy, and 20% from other sustainable. Let's focus on energy efficiency. here. I think all of you are aware there is a need for us to go modernizing. The modernizing is not that build a new building, but of course you can uh, create uh, energy efficient buildings by modernizing it and electrifying a transport system. I think here, 30% uh, of energy reduction is possible in the HVAC system. 28% you can reduce in the transportations and 40% energy saving is possible. I think by 2040, by using these technologies, 8% of electricity consumption can be reduced. That means emission footprint we can contribute by 40%. What does it mean to the building? I think 40% of global energy or one third of greenhouse emissions or 30% energy saving potential is by doing decarbonizing the building. So that means today, uh, what Kiran has talked about, or what I talked about, energy efficient buildings by using various energy efficiency measures, including variable frequency drives, I think you must look at it, how it contributes to you uh, in, in terms of uh, energy footprint. And that is where the VFD systems are coming into. The modernizing uh, next electrification urban mobility. What do you do with the cars and what do you do with the electric uh, uh, ferries or the ships or the offshore building, offshore um, uh, <clears throat> power? So basically here, 30% of energy demand can be brought down and effects of pollutions can be brought down. So what do you do with the drive technology here? I think there is something to do, uh, drives do have a play, role to play. What is it we can do? We have to accelerate the electrification. I think one is electric vehicles, be it a car or a truck. I think we're talking about here. I think today, most of the uh, cars and buses are electric buses. In India, you would have seen Ashok Leila electric buses are driven by the electric systems and also the electric cars and Volvo trucks, which is coming with electric electrification system. And you also see here, all the ways of ferry or boats or ships are slowly moving into electric systems. I think as per the electric technology available from the drive systems, probably 90% uh, passenger kilometers, uh, we will be able to reduce it by 2050. We will be able to reduce <coughs> NOx emissions by 90% per person. Now let us talk about the real cases. Is it, a, is it a theory or is it practical? What do you mean by India industry? Okay, that's a, electric vehicles. Probably you may not be interested in 
uh, your uh, ships maybe we, we, we may have a little uh, role to play what do you mean by industry industry there's something called uninterrupted motor drive you know we are talking about ups system i'm talking about uninterrupted motor drives or energy storage i think that's an application where we are talking about here i think this is an example of industrial backup uh, dc backup for a boiler fan fans of 1.2 megawatt it can give a 10 seconds backup and that means here we are using um, a battery backup as a common dc bus here and the energy the the, the drives uh, charges the battery and also uh, uses the dc bus to back up the system and this is already being used in the critical applications in industrial indian industries uh, by the large corporates like the tata or jsw or saint gobain or uh, Super smelter, just to name a few, there are quite a lot of applications that are being used already there. And this is something which is in the critical applications. The second one which is coming up is about the uh, 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 offshore power supplies. I think you can see here the offshore power supply is something which is uh, very, very common now. I think it is evolving. And here you could see a uh, kind of uh, energy saving of around 5,000 liters uh, fuel uh, per day. One, one of the examples, what we have shown here. So that means the drive is no more a drive. It is beyond a drive, be it a hardware, be it a software, be it intelligence, be it as a sensor. I think a lot of value additions are being uh, bringing out here with respect to this technology. here. So I think today the drive has moved away from a basic just a VFD, which is running a basic motor to data points, uh, data mining, and also give informed decisions and also help you to run the critical applications like uh, the instead of UPS. I can give an SN open class, the entire uh, 400 KV UPS is replaced by UPD systems. So I think it's a redundant systems are completely driven. by. I think this is just to give an example about what the technologies are evolving. I think there are a lot of things we can talk about, but I think we have 30 minutes slot. So I think I have to uh, stop it here. And uh, as I said here, there are a lot of things that are happening in the dry space. I think we are building a better tomorrow by using this technology. 